Here's Roxana Saberi with a story about taste put to the test. The taste test is mighty important too. Over the decades, taste testing hasn't changed much. That's because Sebastian Michaelis says it works. 1111. For this master taster. Course. Grading tea involves math. 1213 hard. And multiple senses. Yeah, I think a bit soft, maybe a bit stewy. What is the zing? What is the color? What is the sparkle? What is the body? For each of those parameters, we will grade teas between one and 40. For a novice, zing means how much flavor hits Sorry. your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, the zing feels like a five or six. And for you? Uh, this is more like a 19. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, I'm way off. <laughs> but it's okay. It took Michaelis years comparing hundreds of brews a day 30. to detect the subtle differences. 39. His taste buds are now so discerning, 30. British tea maker Tedley has insured them for nearly one and a half million dollars. The most important thing for us is that the consumer, the person who's making their cup of tea, isn't getting a weird experience. We have to make sure it's always consistent. And how consistent is it? Very consistent. We've been doing this for, you know, over a hundred years. For each palate, there is a flavor that is just right. Food firms have long relied on seasoned palates. This personal testing of aroma... And focus and groups flavor. to predict if we'd it's like a new product. ...that is as scientifically objective as the scientists can devise. But this serious science is far from perfect. Yeah, I'm not really tasting the bacon at all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> After all, we're only human. Okay. That's why tech companies are now trying to teach machines to taste more objectively and precisely than people. Um, with At with IBM's device. Swiss lab, researcher Patrick Roosh invented this electronic tongue. So now it's obtaining measurements. In under and, two uh, minutes, Hypertaste uh, digitizes a drink's with, chemical yeah. information then compares it to other liquids using artificial intelligence. It's 53% likely that this wine is from France. We can train the system to tell a strong coffee apart from a mild coffee, tell a decaf apart from an espresso. The scientists say one day it could tell us much more. Is my drink safe? Is the drink corresponding to, to the label that's on the bottle? It's about automation, it's about scale, and it's about speed. But mimicking our sense of taste isn't easy. Our tongues have thousands of taste buds. And taste also involves the nose, which uses hundreds of smell receptors that scientists say can distinguish at least a trillion odors. In Silicon Valley, tech startup Aromix says it's cloned the genes behind almost all of those receptors to measure how they respond to flavors and aromas. So you're trying to create a digital representation of taste and smell. Exactly. Right. Josh By Silverman is the CEO. We can give that information back to the companies to say, here's how you can change your recipe to better suit the consumers that you're going after. Our goal is not to put any of the current flavorists or perfumists out of business, but now they have tools to be able to do things they were never able to do before. Thin, soft, dull. Back at Tetley, Michaela says technology can't beat humans' 13, ability 13. to taste and create, at least not yet. Do you think that a computer one day could be more objective than you, more <laughs> accurate? Do I think it will ever be possible? Hopefully not in my lifetime. After your lifetime? <laughs> never say never.